Hey, this is Brooke Drum from PrinterBot, and I have my PrinterBot Simple plugged in the computer. We have verified that it moves, and so we just warmed up the hot end. Now, if you try to put filament in through a hot end, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, you'll have a software section you can refer to on how to heat up the extruder and whatnot, but right now it's PLA. Um, that can go up from, sometimes people say 195. Uh, sometimes I tell people 210, 215. This is degrees Celsius. Uh, that's what the software does. So you're going to be in that range from 195 to maybe 215. That might be on the high end. Um, if I were to try to put this in uh, just like it came, now I'm going to cut this off. Sometimes when you snap this off or cut it off, you'll get like a little ridge on the end or something that's like malformed and it's not a perfect cylinder. So it's always good to like cut it off with some scissors nice and straight. Um, another thing about this filament is it, it kind of forms in a spiral, right? Because it's coiled. Um, so when I try to shove, I'm going to grab up here and I'm trying to shove this straight down. What's going to happen? It's going to turn the corner. I'm, I'm just moving straight down and it's going to tend to do that. So just a little tip. I like to take the end of it and just real gently do that. You see how that little notch is? So now when I push down, it's actually going in a straight line, see? And so that's what I do. So to feed the filament in, again, um, you've heated up your, your uh, hot end here. It is to temp. So right after you heat it up, get this in there. If you leave this hot for a long time um, with no filament in, uh, well, we've run filament through at the factory here, so there'll be a slight little residue of the plastic that clings to the walls. Um, not a problem, if you push in more filament, you'll, you'll get some out. So often this first time that you push filament through manually with your hands, you'll get a different color coming out because may, may, maybe we weren't using this color. And it's, sometimes it scares people, but it's nothing to be wor worried about. It was just what was clinging to the walls. The problem is if you leave that filament cling to the walls and let it sit for an hour because you forgot what you were doing and it's up to temp, it could char, kind of like burning your toast. Uh, we don't want to toast filament, all right? We want it to remain fluid. So that's why um, once it heats up, let's get some filament in there. And when you're storing it, um, some people just cut off the filament and uh, leave it in there so they can't make this mistake. So here we go. I'm going to pinch down right here on the right hand side, there's a spring. Now, in order to pinch properly, do not grab the fan. That thing will break off. You want to put your, it's real tricky because you want to make sure you're not touching the hot end because it's hot. And uh, so I can get enough mo movement there to, to feed this in. Have a little notch. I'm going to go straight down. I'm going to look at it straight on. And I can pivot that over by pushing down. It's real hard to pinch and it's going to go all the way down. It might catch itself on the gears. You want to move past that, down past the bearing and the gears, into that brown plastic. It's called peak. And so now I'm in there, but I haven't put it down there any very far. I'm, I wanted to stop to tell you, so sometimes it'll even catch on. There's like going through metal, then it's going through the peak. And then what you don't know is inside that peak is Teflon. It's real slippery. There's Teflon. So there's a lot of layers to go through. You could catch on the side of any one of them. So you should be able to push this down a couple of inches. And sure enough, I'll do it from reverse here. Sure enough, when you push it through there real slowly, you should get this filament coming out. I'll just make a little pile there. So I know how much force just by doing it by hand and holding this spring compressed. Um, when the spring is not, when you're not compressing the spring, um, it is possible to like force it down by hand, but right now you're overcoming the hold that the motor has on it. And by the way, when, after I've run this for the first time in the software, in fact, I'll do it real quick. Um, I'm going to extrude in the software. Here we go. It's going to extrude five millimeters. So I've done it manually. Now I'm doing it with the software. Now, important point, don't grab that with your hand. I've got a little pair of pliers, you can use tweezers. Let's see that again. And when it comes out, it's plastic and it's sticky, right? So it might grab onto the end of the 
nozzle, nothing to worry about. I just kind of coax it away a little bit or take it off there. Sometimes it bunches up, but it's working. Remember, when you're using this, it's going to be pressed a fraction of a millimeter um, above the bed. So because I didn't want it to sit there and just be hot while I tape up the board, um, I wanted to get some filament inside there. Now I'm going to turn it towards me because we don't print on the metal. Um, don't try that. It doesn't work. Uh, but if you have blue tape, not all blue tape is equal. Buy your blue tape from us and it'll be the perfect blue tape. We have searched the world far and wide. And what we do know is if you go to Lowe's and buy some blue tape, almost bound to fail, um, buy this stuff, it's good. You can experiment on your own and find one, but some blue tape has wax. And uh, just like your cookies, you don't want to try to stick stuff to wax. So I put one roughly down the middle, one uh, length of tape. I'm going to flank it. This is two inch tape, so I'm going to flank it with a strip on either side. I'm not being too fussy about it. But what's crazy is when you go to print something, you will see the seams in this tape on your print, but on the very bottom of the print. So I'm moving this over so I can get a better shot at the other side here. So that's roughly six inches by six inches. Hold down these edges so they don't grab on the sides. Now, the more I rub my greasy fingers all over this, the more likely I am to get skin oils on it. Um, you can clean this with uh, alcohol. I recommend denatured alcohol. No oils or anything. Or you can uh, get a little acetone. Acetone isn't all equal. There's pure acetone um, that is like really strong fingernail polish removers, like 100%. Uh, you might have to buy that at Lowe's or something, but if you use acetone from like Target or Walmart, it's very much watered down. Anyway, I've got my, uh, my tape on. Now I'm actually ready to print. Now, let's do something. Um, I have, in the software here, um, I have set it a little high so that I can illustrate how to, how to do this, but we've already done this, but let's do it again. Home X. I'm gonna do it again. Found its home on X, home Y. Now I'm in a home Z. This is the scary moment. A bit of a squeak. You might want to put a drop of oil on this. Remember, it's unused as of now. So I can tell uh, just by looking. In fact, I'm going to put motors off because uh, when you see how I can't move that now, I've run the printer. It doesn't want to move these, these motors hold firm when they're on. You're not supposed to be able to move that. Now, the Z I can move because right now it's not printing. It's not going to take control of that motor. But X and Y are, are locked. So if I do motors off, there it goes. I can, now I can move it. Now, this is not touching the bed. In fact, I probably need a little more tape over here. but. Um, I just wanted to show you that there's about a width, looks like almost two millimeters before it touches. When you home Z, that's okay if it does, the, the tip doesn't touch the bed. This sensor is saying, hey, whoa, slow down, stop. I'm sensing metal and I know where the bed is, okay? That's what it's doing when homing Z. Now, like I told you earlier, um, the reason I looked to see that there was a gap between the tip and the bed is I don't want to scratch it. So when you're moving around there. Okay. So I'll tell you what, since we know um, filament is flowing, X, Y, Z homing work, I'll do a home all, which is gonna go, let's home X, let's home Y, let's home Z. And we're gonna go to the next video to show you the calibration of your auto sensor, but right now I'm feeling good. We got our first moves down. It is working.